Most of the ocean is open to fishing, mining, drilling, and other damaging activities. These areas are like a bank account where everybody withdraws, but nobody makes a deposit. Marine protected areas are investment accounts with a principal set aside that grows with compound interest and produces returns that we all enjoy. Not all MPAs are equal. In reality, there are many types of MPAs with a wide range of goals, expectations, and degrees of effectiveness on the water. Some MPAs allow no extraction at all, while others permit almost all types of extraction. Some MPAs are in place in the water with management plans that are activated, while others only exist on paper. The conservation outcomes from one type of MPA will differ from another, and many MPAs are not set up or functioning to achieve their stated goals. So we know there are a lot of very large marine protected areas designated all around the world, but we don't really know how they're doing. The MPA guide provides a tool, a common ground for countries, practitioners to evaluate and communicate the effectiveness of their MPA management. So the MPA guide consists of four elements. These are the stages of establishment of an MPA, the level of protection, the enabling conditions, these are what's needed for an MPA to be successful, and the outcomes. These are the social and ecological outcomes for biodiversity conservation, for human well-being, and the outcomes are integrally tied to those stages, those levels, and those conditions. There is a shared and growing interest in ensuring that MPAs are not only effective, but also equitable. And the lack of equity in the ocean space goes back to the idea that the most vulnerable communities uh, along the coast are the ones that are most disproportionately affected by changing ocean conditions. And not only that, but they're also usually not the main drivers of change in the ocean space. To that end, the enabling conditions provided in the MPA guide are an excellent starting point or base upon which to um, be more inclusive in um, the participation through the process in engaging uh, existing rights holders in effective collaboration and communication and transparency throughout the process of an MPA uh, being established. The MPA guide allows us to categorize on the basis of the level of protection, whether these protected areas are achieving their conservation outcomes. It also allows us to look at the stage in designation. So if a site is simply a commitment and a proposal that's been put forward by a government, that's quite different to a site that has been legally formally designated. And again, that's quite different from a site that has actually got enforcement in the field and has been implemented. So in this way, the MPA guide links stage of establishment, level of protection, and enabling conditions with the conservation outcomes that can be expected from any type of MPA. This framework can be useful for planning new MPAs as well as adapting existing ones. And the goal is to set an MPA up for success so it can deliver benefits to the surrounding communities. The guide framework is also a valuable tool for tracking global ocean protection progress. It allows us to look not only at the extent of MPA coverage, but also the quality of MPAs by assigning different levels of protection and implementation. The MPA guide, I think, is a really useful additional piece of scientific research. Um, it obviously complements the existing uh, guidance that IUCN has produced for the global conservation community, but it will enable us to go uh, a few steps further by providing a common language on the state of implementation and the level of protection. And in doing so, it's also helping implement a, a recently approved motion from the Marseille World Conservation Congress. The MPA guide is like a national language of a country. It facilitates people from different ethnicities who are speaking different local languages and dialects to communicate with each other. MPA guide embraces the diversity of MPA management effectiveness evaluation that each country does. It can facilitate communication and share learning on the MPA management across sectors, countries, and people. The MPA guide is a real world solution being used now to help us understand what protection exists and what more we need to do to ensure the health of the ocean so we can achieve our global shared goals.